Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game we have up on the tabletop. A real treat is Wild Ascent. Wild Ascent is by Lazy Squire Games. It takes about mm, an hour or more if you want to play the campaign. And it is for one to four players. It is a cooperative game in which you're going to be basically traversing this uh, wild land. And then, of course, after completing your quests, you're going to venture back to a village and you're going to help make it prosper and you're going to be able to get acquire work and whatnot. Now the game also has a competitive variant which will be a separate video all in itself because both games are very different in nature but are still tactical games and I think they kind of deserve their own own review video for each one of them. So this one's going to be specifically covering the cooperative version of the game where you can play it by yourself with up to three additional friends. And you're all going to be getting characters, you'll be fighting against monsters, the game's going to come with a bunch of miniatures, and you'll be playing a tactical style combat in which you're going to be put down into a specific scenario and you're going to deal with these different baddies as they occur. You'll be moving your characters, you'll be swinging your axes and defending, you'll be acquiring new things from towns, you're going to be placing down different uh, workers and whatnot that are going to help you along in your journey, and of course upgrading the buildings, thusly giving you more currency and more space area for in order to be able to acquire monsters in pens or even to be able to utilize the monsters pelts and whatnot to give you specific items. And then of course you're going to go back in again. There's 10 different rounds for the scenario, but there's also for the, for the campaign, but there's also additional scenarios in which you can play in the game. Anyway, let's come down below. I'll show you the uh, components of all the game and then we'll go into a little bit of gameplay. I won't discuss everything though because I have two full walkthroughs for both variants of the game and if you really want to know how to play you can watch those. But nevertheless Plus, let's go down and show you what you get in Wild Descent, at least currently what's what's there, not including all the expansion and Kickstarter stuff that's available for you on Kickstarter. So here we have the cooperative gameplay version of Wild Ascent and everything that's included, well, at least of what we got. There's a ton of stuff on the Kickstarter campaign that's probably been included since then. But let's go ahead and go over everything and then we'll talk about a, bit about a bit about setup. So as you can see here, you're going to be getting a board and a bunch of miniatures. They're going to have your character miniatures along with your monsters. You're going to also get a board for the town, including spaces that are going to give you uh, spots for your workers. And this will tell you what your town stuff does. There's currency, which is gold that you'll get from killing creatures. These are upgradable tokens that'll upgrade your buildings here. These unlock your specific talents. These are what you're going to be using to carry uh, monsters in that you've captured. They're basically monster capture points. These are going to be workers. You're going to get one at the beginning of the game. These are going to be your uh, different things that you can craft, whether it be potions or whether it be specific types of armor or weapons. These are your creature abilities, which you'll be adding to the game based on the creatures you're going to be adding. And then, of course, you're going to be getting these different pieces here, the little tokens they're going to signify uh, trap holes and pitfalls and dangerous terrain and blocking terrain. You're being capture tokens. You're going to be getting a lot of tokens. As well as, of course, monsters. These are the crafting materials for the monsters, the monster tokens themselves. And these over here are going to be miscellaneous tokens. They could be anything from, like, slows to... Uh, Oh, a whole bunch of different things, right? And then over here are your player boards. You're going to have your player tokens, which you'll be using to keep track of your health, which is around this board here, along with your character abilities, the base stats of your character, and, of course, some additional stats for, like, your health and your movement. And then over here are going to be your passive and your active abilities. These will also be active and passive abilities as you acquire them from upgrading them due to these buildings over here. You're going to be getting a set of dice, which you'll be using to fight with, and, of course, a six-sided die, which will determine what scenario you're doing. And this one we specifically set up already is the uh, ambush scenario. The monsters have all come in and ambushed us. Over here are some cards for the monsters and depending on uh, which round you're playing is going to be depending on what monsters you're going to be getting. You'll be selecting one of these two uh, cards over here and it's going to tell you what you need to do with them as well as what you're going to be able to choose like pick a monster from each of these different decks here as well as a lava fiend and put them down. If you ever acquire more than one same type of a monster you're going to go ahead and shuffle it back in and then you're going to go ahead and pick a new one out so you always have different monsters. In this one here we already set it up for five and these tell you the different monster decks as the game progresses the monsters will get more and more challenging and the different locations are going to get more challenging as well you're also going to start with this uh building here right in the middle at stage one and then you're gonna to get to choose two of your of your choice whatever ones you want to choose which will activate as well and that might unlock certain abilities here which are going to be down on your character card here you're also then going to take out any of the two cost workers and you're going to remove them from the deck draw three 
and then you're going to pick one of them, put it on the board, take all the rest of the workers, and put them back into the deck and shuffle them. Workers are going to be useful to help you craft tools, they give you passive abilities, and sometimes they'll probably help your town out. You're going to roll a die to determine the scenario you're going to be partaking in. Like I said, we rolled this one, it's the ambush scenario. And not only that, but you're going to make note of where all the characters are and all the tokens are placed, and then you're going to roll for these different tokens because different tokens represent different things, so it makes the game unique in its own way. Set aside your captures, set aside the monsters based on the card, as well as their life tokens and all of the uh, different materials you can gain from them due to destroying them. After you've done that, make sure you have your characters on all their boards set aside. There's up to four of them over here, but there's probably more in the campaign now due to, due to stretch goals and whatnot. And then make sure that they're all facing the specific way due to the scenario. You're then going to choose a starting player, and then you're ready to begin the game of Wild Descent. All right, let's come up, and I'll talk to you about how turns work and then how monsters activate. And then we'll come down, and I'll show you a brief overview of how it works. Like I said, if you want to see a full, in-detail playthrough, you can go ahead and watch in the description below. So we've got the basics down for Wild Descent, the cooperative gameplay. You have your deck of monster cards. You're gonna make sure you shuffle them all up because each of the monsters is gonna have a certain amount of cards that they're going to use to activate. And depending on the scenarios, who's going to get to go first, the monsters or the players? And basically it's going to go back and forth, monster, player, monster, player, player, monster, player, monster, until all the players have activated, in which case all the players are going to get to refresh and then begin again. On your turn as a player, you're gonna have this character board here and it's gonna tell you your defense for your melee, your defense for your uh, magical, and then your uh, range, your amount of base damage, and the amount of die you roll. These die are going to have either stars for special abilities or just simple slash daggers that are going to be for basic damage. And you can go ahead and utilize your main attack to do that. It'll have your health at the top, and on the left hand side it's going to have your movement. And then of course these are all your passive and other active abilities. So you're going to be able to move on your turn, and then you're going to be able to take part in one of the actions that is either listed on your card or a basic attack. Another action, and this is going to be to capture a monster. Capturing monsters is interesting because they have to be at least half health, and then once you get to be in a certain area to capture it, you place a capture token on the monster, you'll take damage. If the monster activates while you're trying to capture it, every person trying to capture it is going to take damage. And uh, once enough players have captured it based on the level of the monster, that monster will then become yours uh, to take back to town and in which you can sell. If you don't want to capture a monster, you can choose to kill it and that will give you the resources located on the card. It'll tell you what they get. So for instance, this, the Wild Wood Sentinel is going to have these little horns on it and you can utilize those crafting materials to craft things, which is mainly, mainly part of the full campaign of the game. You go back and forth, back and forth, and the monsters will take their actions based on the card in the deck you're going to draw. If a monster dies and you draw a card of that type, then you're going to simply put that card on the bottom and draw a new card. If it's the same, it's, if it once again is another dead monster, then you're going to have the monsters pass, and if not, you'll activate. Once a monster activates, it goes back to another player's turn. You can only have one player's character activate per turn, uh, and you can't have them activate more than once until all of them have activated. Then, uh, after you've just defeated all your monsters, or you've captured and defeated them in some way, you're then going to go to town. Now, the other way is if you all die, which means it's game over, but uh, you hopefully will not do that and you'll go to town. Going to town will give you a certain amount of actions per character in which you'll be able to utilize, I think it's five, to either buy more workers, to sell your monsters, to upgrade your town, uh, to be able to utilize a whole bunch of great different things that you can do to make your town better, to then again increase your playability with your characters. You will have unlocking abilities over here on the far left hand side of your character board, whether it be one gate or two, uh, was it food and swords, they, they all indicate a different building that's going to make your characters stronger throughout the game. So it's going to have this this ability to kind of tableau management uh, portion in the game, which is really, really interesting and unique, and I'll explain it down below a little bit. But then you're going to go back into the fray by drawing a new card, getting new monsters, and uh, refreshing the scenario by rolling the die and deciding what happens. After that, you continue to play the game up to about, I think it's 10 rounds. Unless you're playing a specific scenario, then that's probably different, but I don't have the scenarios, so I'm not going to be able to explain those to you, unfortunately. But anyways, that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to be going throughout the campaign. Hopefully you can defeat it. If you can't, you die. That's game over. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the game. As far as how combat and all that kind of works, I'll give you a little bit of an idea, and then I'm going to tell you what I think about it. All right, so we're back to the game where all the set, and I went ahead and shuffled up the monster deck, so all five monsters all have their cards into this deck, which you then go ahead and take and shuffle. I've also went ahead and placed all the life tokens here on this side of the board. There are two sides to the board, though, so if you want one side to be monsters and one side to be the players, that will probably help you, but just for your own sake, I put them all up there. The players are over here, and of course the monsters are up here. They all have their own 
unique passive and active abilities that trigger based on what is happening throughout the game. In this specific scenario, monsters will activate first, so you're simply going to take one of these cards and flip it over, and then you're going to read it. It'll tell you what the enemy what enemy that uh, it, the monster is targeting, and then it'll tell you what it does. So it says the enemy with the lowest magical defense up to the lowest HP places creature on an unoccupied field adjacent to the target, and then make a magical attack. So this monster specifically is the Lava Fiend. Whichever one of these monster creatures it happens to be, he's going to go ahead and do that, and then you're going to, to activate. It'll say range, and it'll say one, so one away. And then based on the, the level of the monster, and all these monsters are different levels. This Lava Fiend happens to be a level three, so you look at the third number, which is five base damage and four dice. So five and four, you're going to go ahead and roll these and add them up. So there's five, and this is one. That's six. And then you're going to take a look at the character, which I think is uh, well, this guy here. Look at his defense, which is two. Subtract that, that's four. And he's going to then take four damage, and you're going to mark it on this track here. After the monster goes, this goes into a discard pile. And then any of the player's characters can choose to go in any order that you'd like. So maybe you want to head and have, oh, I don't know, oh, have this guy go, right? So we're going to go and say, okay. Well, when you're activating for movement, if he's facing this way, whenever you want to switch from for, for his facing, it's going to cost you one. So if you want to switch like this, that would cost you one movement. He has three total. But when you're moving, you choose to move forward, uh, left, or right. So in this case, I could do that for two. I wouldn't actually have to change his facing that way, which is pretty cool as well. You're going to go ahead and check his range, which is two, and then you could choose to use his basic attack. But don't forget, all of the characters have their own unique abilities, as well as if you've unlocked anything here, you can go ahead and choose to use them as well. I think there's uh, one for passive, which I believe is the uh, play sign, I think. Attack damage target and assign two damage to enemies adjacent to the target. And then there's a, so there's a plus and a play. One of them's passive, one of them's active. You'll be utilizing those throughout the game as well. And you'll be rolling the dice. But for his basic attack, it's pretty simple. Four base damage and two dice. You roll them up and nothing's on before. And the monster would take damage based on his defense. And you can also go ahead and check the monster to make sure he doesn't have any special actives or passives. And this one says uh, on defense, assign three damage to any adjacent attacker. So he would actually take three damage. And if he's adjacent as well, he'd take three as well. As well. So that's why you want to be careful with the Lava Fiend and how you're attacking them. And that's why also the Lava Fiend likes to get up in your face with these monster cards. When you're done utilizing that character, that guy's going to be frozen and the next player's go next monster is going to be able to attack. A Lava Fiend would flip over again and he would go ahead and attack another player. And then, of course, you choose one of the other three, Zactos, Fanny, or Illithenia, and then you're going to be utilizing those. Now, like I said before, monsters are going to be captured, and how you're going to capture them is you're going to reduce their health total to less than half of whatever their health is. So if he's at 15, if you get him down to 6, you'll be able to try and capture him. You need to be adjacent to him and you use, use these capture tokens on the monster. Depending on the level, it's plus one. So in this case, he has three, so you need to capture him with four characters. So he gets a little more challenging to do so. But if they're lesser level, it's going to be easier to try and capture them. Some of them you're going to want to just based on how difficult they are to uh, deal with. Like the Phoenix, he'll come back to life. So it's easier just to limit it down to a half health and then go ahead and capture it. But sometimes you might need the materials and defeating monsters are going to get you these materials. And yeah, so it's a basic tactical game, which you're going to be moving around the board based on your facing and if you want to switch your facing around you can then go ahead and move different ways as well. These pitfalls here will make you take damage and you fall into them. Some of them are going to block line of sight and I think the basic rule is simply middle to base. Uh, if it can touch the other middle to base then it's in range depending on your number of course. And that's the basic idea of this. After that happens and you either defeat all the monsters or capture them or any, any combination thereof, you'll move on to this board over here in which case you'll be able to upgrade or, or buy different builds buildings. And to do that, you're going to need to sell monsters, which is going to give you gold here. And these little tokens here are going to determine the types of monsters you have uh, captured. Three for a three star, one for a one star, in which case that is how you're going to gain the gold. You'll also be able to pick up workers here. You'll be able to draw from this deck and then purchase them. And depending on, because everything is going to require a certain amount, like it'll say, oh, you can only capture two monsters right now, or only, you can only have two workers right now. And you'll be able to acquire them and put them down onto the board. And each of these buildings do something different. You have the creature pen, which holds monsters, the seekers then, which is going to help you scout to find different areas to go to on the next campaign, making it either easier or more difficult. The barracks, which allow you to heal your characters, and you'll definitely need to heal your characters. It's one of the most important buildings in the game, in my opinion. The workshop, which is going to allow you to access equipment, and then the temple, which will allow you to heal um, a seeker for two health. Not only that, but when you beat a scenario, you're going to actually heal uh, characters in general anyway, which is pretty sweet. And then once again, you'll go back into the fray. You'll be adding new monsters monsters down and fighting and fighting and then going back to town, doing that back and forth in this cooperative game. That's the basic idea of it. Monsters are going to get more and more different.
difficult when utilizing these different things here. And as the rounds progress, you'll be getting rid of the level one monsters only keeping level two and or increasing it to more level three monsters and drawing it still randomly, but still making it difficult to encounter these things. Utilizing, of course, all of these tokens, depending on the different abilities that you're gonna have throughout the game. And that's the basic idea of the cooperative version of Wild Descent. All right, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about it and what whether or not you should pick it up. So that was just the cooperative variant of the game. There is, of course, a competitive variant, and there's a bunch of additional content, which I probably do not have here, so I can't explain it all. Um, but as you can see, it is a semi-dungeon crawler slash uh, tactic style game with a little bit of town management involved in it. Uh, some people have called it a mini Kingdom Death. Now, I don't, I can't give or take from that because I haven't played it. I've heard that game is specifically very good, but this one is a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy tactical combat games. Games, and this one does a really good job of that. It's a, it's, it's kind of like a slice and light a lot of life in, as far as tactics goes. And then going back to the board is really unique and interesting as to how you're going to increase the game. Everybody gets to talk amongst each other in that action, that portion of the game. There's less alpha gaming happening in that point. But um, I guess because it's a thick uh, game, you're going to have the problems of, of course, people suffering from analysis paralysis or the amount of stuff on the board going on. There's so many different things you have to remember and that plays into these thicker dungeon crawl slash tactic style games. Remembering that the, the specific wood sentinel, he's got his two different types of defenses, his health, and of course on activation he summons uh, wildwood skirmishers that have, have, that have all, the, all their own unique stats, and then you have to activate those when he activates. Uh, sometimes I'll forget one or two of those things, and maybe that's just the type of player that I am, but overall that's, that is an excellent part of the game. It just makes it a thicker, more enjoyable game. The miniatures for this game are amazing. If you're a big collector of miniatures, this one, uh, th these guys rival Simon in my opinion. I own a lot of Simon games, and when I th when I saw the prototype version of these all these miniatures, I was like, yes, this this is going to be really cool as far as that goes. The artwork is really cool as well. I like the style of the box, box making you feel like you're going to an arena, which of course is more akin to the competitive variant of the game and less akin to the dungeon crawl slash tactics variant of the game. Um, so, what are the positives? Like I said, there's the miniatures, there's the artwork, there's the style of combat. It plays like an, it's very flowy as far as the combat goes, as far as the mechanics go. I didn't notice any problems with it. There's a few little like glitches here and there that are being f fixed that were like, oh, okay, I see what that is. Or, oh, I, I, okay, you're going to switch that. And, okay, that makes sense. But as far as that goes, it was really, really well made, really, really straightforward. Um, I guess a negative can be. Maybe it, maybe it might feel a little samey to certain people that you're going to go from one board to the next, back and forth, back and forth. I wouldn't ever sit down and play a full campaign, all 10 rounds in one sitting. It's just way too much. And um, I'd probably rather play scenarios of the game. Like I sat down, we played once, I think we played three rounds in a row on the first day when we first set this up and I was enjoying myself. And the reason why I kept enjoying myself, even though the tactics portion still felt like another variant of tactics, like Final Fantasy Tactics is just another variant every level, but it got progressively more difficult. Monsters had different, uh, different challenges. And of course your characters all gain new special abilities and all that kind of stuff. So it kept it fresh for me every single time, which is really cool and really important in tactic games, especially ones that can continue and continue. Um, speaking just for the cooperative game, this is, this is excellent. Uh, the, I, the competitive version, I'm not going to talk about it in this video. I'll, I'll have a separate video for that one, but um, I really, really like this one specifically. It really feels interesting and different. Uh, the last tactics game I played was pretty interesting because it had a worker placement vibe, and then it had you go into a tactics. This one has like a, a management vibe when you're going and then going back into tactics. Um, everything looks really well made and really well done. I'm really excited to see how it does. I like the fact that they're just doing an excellent job with that campaign. Uh, this is a little late of a video, as you can tell, just due to when I got the prototypes. But um, it's doing very well, as you can see, and for a very good reason. Anybody who likes tactical style games, anybody who likes miniature games, if you like the style of artwork for this game, this is going to be a real win for you. If you don't like games that are going to go back and forth with tactics, if you don't like games that are going to involve the dice combat, even though there is still base damage and you can have a lot of decision making as to whether or not you want to use magical attacks, this or that attack, and uh, all the different bonuses and upgrades and all that. Uh, maybe it might not be for you, 
Um, like I said, you're kind of going to know if this is the style of game that for you or not. If it's if it appeals to you, this is definitely one to check out. I really had a good time with this one, and it will probably be playing it live hopefully shortly. We'll see how that goes. But uh, Wild Descent did an excellent job on this one, Lazy Squire Games. I'm very impressed with it, and I'm excited to see their next thing. But if you're interested, you can take a look at our full walkthrough down below because we didn't provide everything there's just a lot going on we have a full walkthrough of this to take a look at for an entire round entire scenario of play and uh, if you're interested in the more competitive uh rules or a competitive aspect review i'll have that in the description below as well but anyway that's what i think about the cooperative game of wild ascent if you're interested do go ahead and take a look in the description uh, on kickstarter it's doing very well and for a very good reason all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you're interested in taking a look at wild ascent go ahead in the description below as well as checking our website unfiltereddgamer.com for some blog posts giveaway kickstarter lists and more and uh one thing i have to mention for the camera my cameraman he always likes to put a little bit of input uh he really enjoyed the player board because you want to do everything, is basically quoting him. You want to do everything, and if you want to do everything, that makes it very, very balanced. And I, I, I agree with him. The player board makes this really interesting. Without it, it would just be another style tactics game with great miniatures. But with this, it just includes that little extra something that I really, really like. Um, as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They do tons of great giveaways for tons of great games. Don't forget to take a look at them, and don't forget to check out the rest of our videos for this. All of the walkthroughs and all that are going to be in the description below. Alright guys, that's all I got for this one and as always, I appreciate it. Remember my rules and opinions, all that are all my own. You should make up your own mind uh, and I, I'll see you next time.